Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Glasser with the Medical Sciences Program at the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine. I'd like to welcome you to a series of videos for our students that are meant to guide students through basic molecular biology procedures that they will have to master as part of our Biomedical Laboratory Techniques introductory class. Videos are assembled in five different themes that will be techniques that are universally applicable to students no matter where they go in their research career. We hope you enjoy them. To begin the semester, we are experiencing a true infectious disease pandemic. And I feel compelled to take a moment and remind you of additional features that we have in place. As students start the lab, we will have ethanol and each squirt bottles available where each student will wipe down the benches to um, maintain sanitation. As you work through the lab, if necessary, we have hand sanitizers and sterile wipes for hands or laptops in case you have any concerns. We also will have small alcohol wipes for points of common contact such as the microscopes where you wipe down the eyepieces before you use the microscope and after the microscope. And as each lab begins, we'll be using infrared thermometers to take your temperature to make sure that there are no students with elevated temperatures and at risk for their um, lab needs. Thank you very much. One of the most important concepts in research is being able to take accurate and precise measurements. So in this lab, we're going to teach you guys how to do that using two types of pipettes, serological pipettes and smaller value micro pipettes. So the serological pipettes are those that are used for larger values. They have the tips like these. Just open it up and then put the tip in. And then you're going to use the top button to take liquid in and then the bottom liquid, bottom button to dispense liquid. Like that. That. The micro pipettes are used for smaller values. So there's four kinds that we're going to be using in this lab, the P10, P20, P200, and P1000. And each of them are labeled at the top of the pipette. And the numbers on them indicate the maximum value that they can be used for. So the P1000 goes up to 1,000 microliters, the P200 goes up to 200 microliters, the P20 to 20, and then the P10 to 10, so it's important to be cognizant of this and not use the wrong um, pipette for the wrong value. For the P1000, you want to do like larger values, and if you're going to do a smaller value like P50, you want to be sure that you're using the P200, not the P1000. So you set them using the dial, and you just turn it up or down to set it to the measurement that you want to take. So it's important to make sure when you turn the dial to adjust them that you don't go past their maximum value because that can break the pipette. And then each pipette has its own box of tips that you use. So you just push the tip of the pipette into the tip. The pipette has two stops. So you're going to go to the first stop and put your pipette tip in and then release it to take in liquid. And then to dispense it, you just push all the way down. When you're done using the pipette tip, you're going to press this button here down to eject the tip like that. And then it's important to make sure that you change tips every time you're pipetting a new liquid. So we're going to have you guys in lab to practice these techniques, um, dispense different volumes of liquid into an analytical balance like this, and record their weight to check your accuracy. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a protein dilution curve, which is standard for most biological assays. The protein assay, you're going to be making nine different dilutions, so you're going to need nine one and a half milliliter tubes labeled A through I. For each dilution, you're going to be using the BSA stock solution and then water to make the different concentrations. Your lab manual has a table with the details of how to make each standard, but in lab we'll also be giving you a flow chart that's a little bit easier to follow. The first step is going to be to mix reagent A and reagent B to make the working reagent. And once they're combined, you should be able to see a slight color change, which lets us know that the working reagent is ready to be used. And then you can put it 
going to be making nine different um, dilutions from the BSA stock and then diluted water. So you're going to need nine tubes um, labeled A through I, and then you're going to be following the flow chart that we give you in lab to make these dilutions. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go through how to make the first three. So in A, we're going to start with using 300 microliters of the BSA stock. And then we're gonna put that into A. And A won't have any water to dilute it. And in B, we're gonna put 375 microliters of the stock and then 125 microliters of water. And then finally in C, we're gonna have 325 microliters of stock and then 325 microliters of water. with the rest of the tubes. For the next step in the protein assay, we're going to be mixing the standards that we just made with the working reagent that we made earlier um, into these glass tubes, and then we're going to incubate them. So we're going to add 150 microliters um, of each of the standards into each of the tubes. So first I'm going to take 150 microliters from A and put it into the tube labeled A. And then I'm going to take 150 microliters from B and then put it in the tube labeled B. And then I'm going to do the same for C. And now I'm going to take three milliliters of our working reagent and put that into the tube. each of our tubes with parafilm and then incubate them at 37 degrees for 30 minutes. So after incubating it for 30 minutes and the color develops, it should look like the spectrophotometer and we're going to be using it to record the absorbance of our samples but first we need to calibrate it. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that it's set to 562 nanometers and then to calibrate it we're going to use the left knob and then turn that so that the percent transmittance is at zero. Then we're going to place the blank in and then we're going to turn right knob until it's at 100% transmittance and then we're ready to put our sample in. So you're going to put your first sample in and then close it and then you're going to record the absorbance which is the numbers in the bottom. You're going to do that for each of your samples. of these samples is essential, and there's two different types of staining. 
One is cytology, which is the staining of individual cells, um, for example, using hematology. And we're going to be doing this by staining oral samples taken from our mouths. And then the other is histology, which is the staining and imaging of tissue specimens, like pathological specimens and surgical biopsy. And um, mice are a common model for human development and disease that are used in histology. And these skills are going to be especially important um, in modules two and five. As an example of cytology, we're going to have you guys um, swab and then stain your own um, oral cells and then visualize them on the microscope. So we're going to have slides available for you. So you want to make sure the frosted side is up, which you can just kind of feel with your finger. And then you want to label the frosted part with your name or something that you can use um, to make sure that you know which slide is yours later. And then you're going to flip it to the bottom, which is the non-frosted slide. And with the Sharpie, you're just going to draw two small circles so you'll, be able to, so you'll be able to see where your cells are later. And then we will have swabs available for you. And then you're just going to take the swab and then swab your cheek cells in the inside of your mouth. Like that. And then you're just going to rub the swab on the top of the slide to deposit your cheek cells. So after swabbing your cells on the slide, you're going to stain your cells now. So we'll have forceps here. So you're just going to clip your slide into the forceps. And then you're going to use each of the three stains and flood the slide with the stain for a minute each and then dump it off and then put the next one. So we're going to start with the first one, which is a fix. So just completely flood the slide with the fix. And then just let it sit on there for a minute. And then just dump the excess off. And you can tap it on the paper to make sure it's all gone. And then next you're going to add the eosin stain. So again, just flood the slide for a minute. Put it on there. Four, and then from there you can go up to C. 
say more in detail, um, but you want to be careful before you go to the 100X, make sure you have a TA to help you because there's a special oil we need to put on before you use that. Once you're done with that, you can take a picture either by holding um, your cell phone up to the camera and taking a picture like that, or we have these band scopes. So you just take off one of the eyepieces and then take the lid off and just put it in instead and then plug the USB into your laptop and then you can save the picture that way. All right, so after you've looked at your cells on the microscope, you can take it over to the EVOS. So the EVOS is also a microscope. It just doesn't have as much power as the other microscopes, but it does have the monitor, which helps you visualize the cells better. So like the other microscopes, you want to start at the lowest objective. So on the lowest objective, you can kind of see the cells there, each of those little pink dots, and then up one more and there you can start to see the details of the cells a little better and you might have to focus and adjust some things as you go up each objective um, and then the highest objective is the 20 x so here you can see the cells pretty well so all of the kind of other stuff here is just saliva and debris from your mouth and then you can see the cells really well, the pink kind of purpley, and then you can see the darker purple dot in the middle, which is the nucleus of each of the cells. And some of the cells look a lot darker, and that's just because they were overstained when we did the staining process earlier. So after looking at the cells in each of the objectives and talking with um, your peers about the different details in the cells and things like that, and you take pictures of the monitor, that will end our cytology experiment. For our histological activity, we're going to be looking at early and late stage developing mice embryo. So here we have an early stage mouse embryo, and you can see this is kind of the head there, and then this is the developing brain, this is where the eyes are going to be developing, and then we can move this down a little bit, that's kind of like the snout and where the mouth begins developing there.